Okay, in this tutorial we're going to use Packet Tracer to create an IPv6 network and configure it with RIP NG or RIP Next Generation. It's an IPv6 routing protocol. Now this is for the uh, Cisco CCNA 5.0 curriculum and I created this Packet Tracer activity for just some practice at a first attempt at using a dynamic routing protocol with IPv6. So, and if, if you want to follow along and you're watching the video tutorial, you can download this packet tracer file that I created from my website at danscourses.com. You can see it here. It's called Packet Tracer 6 Activity, RIPNG, and IPv6. And if you don't see it on the homepage at danscourses.com, just go to CCNA2 and you'll find it there. You'll see if I scroll down, it's right there. RIPNG Packet Tracer 6 Activity. So this packet tracer activity is done in packet tracer 6. It's the new version of packet tracers, so you'll need that version to open the file. And once you open up this packet tracer activity, you'll see here it is. The instructions are on the main screen here where the topology is. And also there's an instruction sheet here which will give you some help too. As you work your way through the packet tracer activity, the completion percentage will go up after every different um, activity or every different task that you complete in your configurations. So, and it pretty much lays out what you should do step by step. So you can see here, step one, configure each PC with the 10th address in the IPv6 subnet, i.e. it's going to be a hex character A because in hexadecimal uh, 10 is an A. So that's what we're going to do. We're also going to need to give it a slash 64 network prefix length and the default gateway and for the default gateway we're going to be using the nearest router interface and we'll use the link local address of the router so let's get started and start doing this right away so what I'll do is I'll close this window you can see the instructions are right here as well and we'll start with um, PC0 here so PC0 you see we're going to give it the A address or for the 10th address and the subnet is 2001 colon DB8 colon DA colon colon uh, one that is the subnet that we're going to be working from so okay so that's it so this is the subnet right here and we're going to be host a and the router is going to be host one but if we look over here we can see that the link local addressing for r1 this router is fe80 colon colon one on all of its interfaces so we'll open up pc0 here and we'll go to desktop and IP configuration and we're going to do this with IPv6 and the address will be 2001 you can see here there's the subnet 2001 DB8 colon DA colon 1 that's actually the subnet portion of the IPv6 address and then we'll say colon colon for all zeros and then A so that will be the tenth address in the 2001 DB8 DA1 subnet. The network prefix will be slash 64 and then the gateway address. Now for the gateway address it's said right here okay the default gateway using the router link local address. Alright so the router's link local address is FE80 colon colon 1 for R1 and that's the router that we're going to be using as our gateway so we put in FE 80 colon colon 1 and so there's our configurations for the first PC let's do the next PC we'll go up here at the top you can see there's PC 2 it's also going to be colon a we need to know what is this network and this network right here is 2001 DB8 DA colon 3 colon colon slash 64 so okay so that's the network right there the router is going to be colon 1 on its global address on the link local address for the router, R2 will be FE80 colon colon 2 on all of its interfaces. So we have all the information that essentially we need to configure this PC. So we'll open up the PC, we'll go to desktop IP configuration, and we'll put in the address right here, 2001 colon DB8 colon DA colon 3, because this is the third subnet colon colon A for the 10th host in the 3 subnet.
or the three network. So there we go. We'll give it the slash 64 network prefix length. And then the gateway, which is FE80 colon colon three. So we've got the link local address. Actually, that's incorrect. It says here R2 is FE80 colon colon two. And it is R2 that we're going to be connecting to right here. So that's actually needs to be at two. The three, I guess I was thinking about the three because the network is 2001 DB8 DA3 and host A. So that looks good. So almost made a mistake, but I'm good. So I'll close that. And now let's go to this last PC down here. PC1 also is going to be host 10 or colon A. And the network is 2001 DB8 DA5. So we'll open this up. We'll go to desktop. I'll drag this over a little bit and then click on IP configuration and let's put in the address. So for the host address for this PC, it'll be 2001 colon DB8 colon DA colon, this is the fifth subnet colon colon A because host 10 and then the 64 slash 64 network prefix and then the gateway which will be FE80 colon colon three and we know that because over here link local addressing r3 fe80 colon colon three on all of its interfaces all right so that's good so we have that configured so now all three of our pcs are configured and we can now start configuring our routers with the addressing and so we'll go to number two here um, you can see here also there's a note on step one that says the link local address is already auto configured on the PCs. What that means is that these PCs, when we first opened up the configuration, already had the link local address configured. That's because they're set to run the IPv6 protocol. So kind of like on my PC here on my Windows machine, if I look at my IP configuration, I'm running the IPv6 protocol. And so I'm given automatically a link local address every computer host on an IPv6 network needs at least a link local address. They'll probably need two addresses, a global unicast routable address and a link local address. So by default, just having the protocol on, you're given a link local address. All we needed to configure was our global unicast address, our routable one, our network prefix, and our gateway. And we could have been assigned those automatically. We could have selected auto config if our routers are set and running IPv6. And we could have pulled that address information from the routers. But in this case, we haven't even configured the routers yet. So that's why we just statically configured our addressing.